right now. I want to welcome to the program from the Independent Women's Forum, Julie Gunlock. Julie, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I am excellent. Did you have a good Memorial Day weekend? I did. I, I am driving. I'm actually driving home from Duck, North Carolina right now. Um, we've dumped the children in the, off the side of the road so I can do this interview. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, well, listen, you'll go back and pick them up, though, right? So everybody was good. Everybody uh, had a good weekend. The uh, the kids uh, uh, did not get washed away in the ocean or anything like that? <laughs> they did not. They did not. It was actually nice. This year I didn't have to – I wasn't petrified every time they got near the near the water. They uh, they have a better you know, sort of set judgment now. So it was a good weekend. That is good. Um, all right, so listen, we, we end up talking a lot about uh, uh, food issues when uh, you join us on the program. And, and late last week, and this has continued on through this week, uh, the school lunch issues have, have popped up again, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and as a matter of fact, Michelle Obama now uh, is, is taking a very proactive role in uh, defending the new school lunch standards that uh, many kids are rejecting by not eating their school lunches, uh, holding an event now, I mean, really pushing back against congressional efforts to, uh, to try to rescind these new rules because uh, as, as members of Congress have heard, school districts, a lot of times, they don't have the money to pay for the equipment upgrades that these new right. standards come with. Uh, you know, they, they're, they're still looking at capital expenses for uh, trying to educate kids, uh, much less try to try to, to feed them uh, so there, there, there has been a lot of pushback by uh, local school districts, but uh, the First Lady's pushing back now as well. Yeah, she is. And, you know, the First Lady really needs to remember who she's pushing back against. I mean, the White House is going to sort of uh, frame this as big, bad Republicans want to bring back ketchup as, uh, as uh, you know, vegetables and bring back the chicken nuggets and, hey, for French fries. Uh, but that's not what it is. Uh, Republicans are trying to give local authorities more control and allow them to opt out because, as you say, they're losing money on this proposition. And so Republicans are just really trying. I mean, let's not forget what Congress is supposed to do. They're supposed to go to Congress and they're supposed to look out for their local areas, right? So local people are complaining about this. And as I said, you know, she needs to remember who she's compl who she's fighting against. The people who complained are the parents who are honestly concerned that their kids are not getting enough food. And two, the kids. I mean, this has become such a problem. The kids are doing, you know, sort of making videos and putting them on YouTube. Um, and not only that, but I think school districts are genuinely concerned about the waste. I mean, when are the environmentalists going to pop up, type up about all the food waste, all the, all the incredible waste that schools uh, food waste that schools are throwing away. Um, so she needs to kind of remember what, what she's fighting back on. Again, congressional Republicans are really trying uh, to, to give control back to the local authorities, and people who are for smaller government should applaud this effort. You know, and it's interesting, uh, looking at the, uh, the, the Fox News uh, piece on this, uh, they, they say, uh, let's see, Sam Cass, director of Mrs. Obama's Let's Move initiative, uh, called the, the bill, quote, a real assault uh, on administrative efforts to make foods healthier for kids. Now, again, as you point out, uh, what this bill does, it would allow schools to waive the standards yeah. if they have a net loss on school food programs for a six-month period. So, in other words, you know, if, if the school districts are losing money on the school lunch program, the kids aren't eating these school lunches, they are, uh, and they're now having to take they're having to figure out, are we going to uh, pour uh, uh, additional resources from some other uh, aspect of our budget into the school lunch program? This would say, no, you can go back to the old standards. Right. Um, I, again, I, you know, as a parent, I'm wondering, are these, are these restaurants we're sending our kids to? Or are they school? Right. Are they supposed I mean, to be learning? You know, what is the first priority there? What would be wonderful if, if these schools that are opting out of the school lunch program could integrate some free market propositions into, or, or, or strategies, ra rather, into finding a solution uh, to these problems? Maybe local schools could actually bring in outside restaurants and say, you know, you have to follow these rules. You know, no, uh, no you know, uh, we're not going to invite Dippin' Dots in and we're not going to invite, you know, uh, McDonald's in, but maybe we can invite a, 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 someone who, who would set up a, 
a salad bar, someone who would only provide, you know, uh, healthier sandwiches. And I mean, kids would really go for that. And that's an opportunity for, I mean, a business would love to get this school, uh, school customers. I hope the other thing that, that happens is that um, people remember that, you know, all this, all this boo-hooing about school lunches, right, on the part of parents, um, there's one way to solve this, right? And I've said this a million times on your show. Um, pack your kids a lunch. What are you doing uh, expecting? It, look, you, you know what other government food program, what other food program is run by the government? Jails. Okay, jails also run cafeteria. And I don't know why people think that they're, they're going to get good, that their kids are going to get good food in a federally run cafeteria. It's never going to improve. In fact, the school lunch program, they have tried to reform this program for decades. It has not, I mean, Michelle Obama is the first one to raise the red flag about, about the school lunch program. And, and yet we keep thinking that these, these, uh, you know, that these meals are going to improve. They, they serve, you know, 50, meal, 50 million meals, you know, a year. I mean, it's, it's not, no restaurant that serves that many food, that, met, that much food is going to serve good food. So I think the, the solution here is for parents. Pack your kid a lunch. It doesn't take long, and it doesn't take very much money. And more importantly, the schools that are opting out, really I hope that they look at more creative solutions to the school lunch program because just relying on the USDA is not the way to provide kids good meals. Talking with Julie Gunlock from the uh, Independent Women's Forum. And, you know, Julie, I've got to ask you as well, um, you know, over the weekend we saw the murders uh, in Santa Barbara. And as I said yeah. uh, on this program a couple of times, um, you know, I'm used to the gun control advocates seizing on every opportunity they can to try to promote a gun control narrative. But we saw a lot of different groups try to use this tragedy to promote their, 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 oh, yeah. their sort of pet cause, um, including uh, you know, some, some uh, feminist hashtags. This was all of a sudden now let's, let's, let's use these murders in Santa Barbara oh, yeah. uh, to, you know, talk about uh, some of these, these, these feminist memes. Um, I'm just curious. I know you were, you were, you know, probably staying away from the internet uh, as much as you could this weekend, but no, did you have I, a chance to, to see any of this? Yeah, I've seen it. Actually, there's a, a feminist out there named Jessica Valente who wrote a truly bizarre piece about, and she said something like misogyny kills. And she sort of blamed this. I mean, this guy is a lunatic. He's a lunatic. And she was blaming it on sexism and that this man murdered these people, not because he became completely unhinged, but rather because he's a sexist. And it was such a bizarre write-up. Um, and our that we re responded to that. Charlotte Hayes, who's also with the Independent R Women's Forum, uh, responded to that, and that's on our blog. Um, this is standard opportunistic behavior by liberals. Um, they will take any opportunity, any tragedy to further their liberal agenda. It's sickening, and it does a great injustice uh, to r the tragedy and to the family suffering. Um, so, yeah, it's really, I, you know, it's not entirely surprising to see them take advantage of this, um, but it's a, tr it's a new low. It's truly disgusting. Absolutely. Uh, listen, Julie, I appreciate you coming on the program. Have a safe drive back, and we'll talk to you again very soon. <laughs> we, we will. Good to be on. Thanks, Cam.